Welcome back to another episode of How I Got the Shot. This episode, we're gonna be focusing on a photo shoot I did for my favorite model and my favorite makeup artist. And just one of my favorite people to create with, Tori Nicole. So in part one, we went through the photo shoot itself, showing you BTS, about gear, about the setup, about the conditions that we were in, the things that we dealt with, and just how we were able to get these amazing shots straight out of camera, no strobes, all natural light, and just great vibes. If you'd like to see that video, click on the card above. I think it's on this side, there it is. In part two, we're gonna go through the selection process. And then from there, I'll show you my basic adjustments I made in Capture One, and then go over to Photoshop and show you guys exactly what I did to make those final polishing steps. Before this session, we were shooting for close to two hours and some change. Got 957 images. They're the ones that I feel that convey what we were going for. They're in focus. There are no immediate issues or anything. Just that is out of the norm. Most of my shots come in like this. I like to take the time while I'm on set to do a lot of test shots because I wanna get a lot of things done right in camera. Part of that process is shooting tether. I choose to shoot tether because one, it gives me a much bigger screen than what my camera can give me, but also it lets me to make adjustments on the fly so I can see how far I can push something or if I'm able to you know, adjust colors, but I can test everything while I'm there. It's a great, great tool. I'm grateful for whoever thought to do that. Whoever you are, you deserve a cookie. As you can see, as we're going through, I tested a couple of different adjustments on the files just to kind of see how I can push and pull them. Let's pull up. Yeah, I do have a layers mask here. So I want to make, you know, make sure she popped out. On this photo, she's very highly skilled. She's been doing this for a long, long time. So Toria is an amazing model. She's been doing this for a while. This is not like our first photo shoot. We've been shooting together for about almost 10 years, since 2000 and, since 2014. As you guys can see with this image, I actually changed the color of the grass. I wanted to test that out before I continue to move on because in my mind, I'd already pictured that the grass would not be the, the typical hue of green. I know I wanted to push green more towards yellow to get that, that fall look. I know I said I wanted to look like summer earlier, but that was more as far as lighting, but I knew like I wanted to push things a little more towards fall when it came to the greenery of the shot. As I said in the first episode, she came up with the overall concept. And then in, in Pinterest, I took the time to, you know, go through the idea and kind of add my feel to it, add the things that I thought would be interesting um, because I'm the photographer. In this scenario, I'm the one who like has that experience with photography. So I knew like the things that would help the image and the things that I would be just attracted to if I was a person looking at the image. And then also what you're seeing here too is me applying different uh, presets and different fills just so I know like what the image could possibly look like. You can see the difference. One thing this does not show you is how hot it was. It was so, so hot. I'm surprised she didn't choose some of these photos. I love negative space shots. It's always been a big, big thing for me. I think it's, it's a guy named Max Wagner. I believe that's his name. I'll put a screenshot of his website up here, but he, I remember seeing his work while I was in college. And this was like almost 14 years ago, 13 years ago when I saw his work for the first time. And ever since then, I just love negative space shots. I don't do it a lot for my commercial work because it's not always applicable, but when it is, I'm definitely like excited to do it. So in these shots, this was the main colors that I was looking for. This is not something that you have to do, but when you're applying color theory, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about it. There are, I don't want to say presets. There's another word for it. There are theoretical, I'm making this up right now as I'm talking, there are theoretical combinations that automatically work. You got your complement, you got your split complement, you got your triad, I mean a triad, and there's a bunch more. But here, I just wanted to make sure the colors were all speaking to each other. So I didn't, I pushed the greens more towards yellow, and then I knew I was gonna push the reds that are in her skin more towards orange, just to kind of get everything within that same, that same realm. But yeah, as you guys can see, going through the selection process. So what I normally do too, is I'll go through, and if I like the image, I'm gonna make them a one star. Then I send all the one stars to my client or my subject or the model that I'm working with. And they will go through and make their selections as well. I'm just gonna speed this process up so you guys can just see overall what we were getting. It almost like a little movie <laughs> with the movie like this. The whole point of this one was to make her give that, I wanted two different types of shot out of this location. One to show like she's in the sky, 
almost, and then another one to make it seem like she's on a really, really large hill and she's just towering over the world. Toria is six foot tall, might be six one. Some days she's taller than me, some days she's not. I'm six foot, so who knows? But it just helps to make her look even taller. I love to emphasize her height, I really do. I don't shy away from it, she doesn't shy away from it. It's something that we both know is flattering for her and absolutely love these shots. So out of everything that was shot, these are the ones that she chose. And I trust Toria quite a bit. She knows what she's doing. And I ended up editing pretty much all of these. I don't think it was all 20, but it was the majority of them. But Toria has great taste in general. So I know like her picking the shots were gonna look good and they were flattering shots for her. So let's move over to Photoshop. Okay, now that we're in Photoshop, let's start with our first layer. We always duplicate our background layer. And on this layer, I start just removing the major blemishes that I see or any little spots, which is the dragonfly and then this camera spot right here. I don't know what that dust spot is. And there was like a, a scar or arm that I wanted to take out. And that was it for the most part. Little minor things here and there on the skin. And then we move on. I knew I didn't need to make a ton of changes to the images. One, Tori is an amazing makeup artist and then she really takes good, great care of her skin. So I, I knew that my changes were gonna be minor, but it's gonna be more about the styling of the images. So I went into frequency separation and I cleaned up the minor things I needed to clean up, made my clone stamp tool, did my general polishing, sharpening or mainly my sharpening was here but these three layers are where i worked on the contrast here making a on this with this levels adjustment layer i use that to really boost the whites in the images because i really want the overall brightness to, to really have some punch to it i generally underexpose my images on purpose so that i can maintain the skin complexion but i wanted to make sure everything popped after that i wanted to desaturate the the blues and also push that blue from your i guess general blue some more than on the cyan side i want to go more to the left of the spectrum just to make the that blue a little more more cyan so the reason why i always push that blue and then i desaturate is because i don't want your eye to spend too much time on it we all know the sky is blue but i don't want you to focus on that i want you to really lock into my subject so desaturating that blue just keeps your eye on the most saturated part of the image which is my client or my subject so from there we did a little bit of color grading so here i'm really pushing the reds and oranges more to yellow that is a style thing you don't have to do but i know i prefer when the skin is not looking as though it's bruised or as if there's sunburn or if it's just too much going on in the skin i wanted to just quiet all of that down so i usually push my reds more towards yellow i'm sorry i usually push my reds more towards orange and yellow rather than have any type of like red really popping out other than if it's like blush or if it's on the lips so that's what we're seeing here. And then obviously I sharpen everything up and the image is good to go. All right, let's move on to another image. The approach was pretty much the same. Go through, clean up all the major blemishes, do your polishing, add your sharpening, desaturate the background layer as always, push the reds more towards orange and yellow. Here I wanted to kind of add some reds to it. As you can see, I added some reds to the bed tones. I didn't do anything in the highlights. And I don't think I did anything in the shadows. It was more just to give back some red for one of the options. I generally would do a, a clean version of my images. And then when I want to do any type of color grading, I'll give my client or my subject those options as well. So they'll usually get like two to three images per image or two to three versions per image. And again, playing with the, the color and then there's the pop. There's that, that contrast to make sure things pop without me losing the detail in the whites. Now let's move on to this image. This one is where things got even more interesting. So let's take all these layers. With this image or this look, the approach was different. I knew, again, like I said before, I wanted to push the greens and the grass more towards your yellow and your oranges. I wanted to just give like a harmonious look as far as the colors. This is where color theory really pops in and helps you out. It keeps you from being distracted. So our next step, the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate the background. On that layer is where I cleaned up a lot of the things that I wanted to remove as far as like distractions in the image. So from the light stand, that was the background stand actually that was there. I removed some blemishes. I removed, I cleaned up our skin in different places just to make sure everything looked right. Did some liquefying, cleaned up her skin, sharpened. 
And then we got to play it with our contrast. Again, I gotta have that pop of contrast for the images to, to really make people stop and stare. And then from there, I wanted to make sure she popped off a little bit more from the background. And then here is where I added this effect. So this effect comes from a program called Exposure. So Exposure 6 is an amazing program. It has a ton of presets that are built in. What this allows me to do, just like any other preset, it gets you an automatic fill. It's essentially like adding a LUT on the top of it. If you guys do any video, you understand what a LUT is. It stands, it stands for lookup table. And you just apply it on top and it just automatically pushes colors and things the way you want. And for this, this was exactly what I wanted. I knew this at a time, once I finished, I knew I was going directly to this program to add this over the top. So I didn't have to try to do this manually because if I did it manually, it was gonna take much longer and there's no point in doing all of that. You gotta work smart to get what you want. Now this is the image where that same plugin, that exposure plugin came into play because there's different versions of it. I use it in a way that I normally don't use it in the sense of like the adding this glow effect. I normally don't use this type of effect or anything because there isn't a lot of commercial applications for it, at least with my clients. The approach to this image fits what I did for all the other images. I duplicate my background layer. I go through the steps of cleaning up any major blemishes. I use frequency separation to grab any like really rough spots and clean that up and I go through my polishing stage. Once you reach the point of balancing out the colors, making sure everything feels right, I'm gonna create that, that merged visible layer. And then I wanted to play around the looks a little bit more. So I sent her this clean version. I had another version where I wanted to make it a lot more warmer, a lot warmer. I do this by adding reds and yellows into the mid-tones. So it's just, this is not affecting the shadows, the darker parts, and the really bright parts are staying neutral as they are. Center that version, and then we have this version. Now, this is very, very heavy. I did this because I just liked it. Toria didn't post this at all. I'm pretty sure if I did post it, this was like the last one in the set because I knew this was very heavy and it's a lot. It is very much outside of what I normally do, but I was drawn to it. So you do it. That's part of the art process is testing out things that you're interested in, you're drawn to, because there's some reason why you're drawn to it and it's better to just try it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, but at least get it out your system. Now, how I got to this field was not any magic or anything crazy. It was simple as making another stamp visible going on to a called Exposure X6. It's an amazing program. It essentially uses a LUT on top of your image. After you've already cleaned up everything and you've made sure the image looks amazing by itself, you can use this on top of it, similar to a preset, to just give your image an entirely different feel. On the right hand side, you have a bunch of controls over here that will allow you to push and pull your image in different ways. I love the feel that I have from this film. And so this is the one I used on her image. And yeah, absolutely love it. I feel like it gives it a whole different tone. It, it just takes the image to a different place and puts you in a different mood. And that was the whole goal. Obviously I wanted to have a clean version, but again, I really was drawn to this feel. Like this was just in my head about doing it this way. Well, yeah, so what I would do with this one would be set it to, let's say screen and then reducing that all the way down. And now you got your highlights that are kind of blurry, but it's that same feel. Please, thank you guys for, I mean, and that's it. Thank you guys for being here and watching another episode of How I Got The Shot. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns. Share this with your friends, your network. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be more videos coming soon. And don't forget, make sure in addition to creating for clients that you're also creating art for yourself. See you guys soon.